What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Alex Schimmel, and here we're here again for another episode of Side of Fries, another podcast that means absolutely nothing because, you know, it's nothing at the moment, but we're going to be, we're going to be here. Uh, today, I have an incredible guest. Uh, actually, I just met him this year. My homie, local yep. comedian, Greg, how do you pronounce your last name? Capra. Capra. Cool, because I didn't want to get it wrong on here. I didn't want to, there to be video evidence. Happens just, all the time. Yeah. And, well, Cap. No, I'm just joking. Uh, dude, what's up? How you feeling? How's it going, man? Thanks for having me. I like how we're like foot distance apart. Like I can touch your feet right now. Yeah, please don't. These dunks were quite, <laughs> quite expensive. It's nah, very sensual. No, nah, I, don't, I don't mind if you just want to, you know, play a little. Yeah, I'll, I'll tap you. <laughs> I'll tap you here and there. No, nah, dude, but like, I actually just met you this year. Uh, I think towards the end of like, like towards December. Yeah. I never really like. Are, are you originally from North Carolina? Or like? No. Yeah, I feel like we just ran into each other at yeah. like random comedy things, and uh-huh. we were like, it was one of those things where like you run into someone enough that you're like, we might as well start saying hi. Yeah. And like start talking, otherwise it's gonna be awkward. Like I have some people that I see at mics that mm-hmm. we we know each other, but we've never acknowledged that we know each other, mm-hmm. and it's just gone on too long now where like we can't make introductions. But you and I, we got past that. We we start talking. But. Yeah, you know what's funny because I remember the first time I met you, it was at Crafties, and mm-hmm. I had just met you. So like we were, I just came back to the scene after like taking a small break. And, like, I remember asking if you could, like, slide down the bench a little bit. And you look at me like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, oh, shit. Did I really? (laughs) Yeah. You gave me this look like, what the fuck do you want? I feel like my first impressions uh, with people are not good. I feel like I rub people the wrong way. I remember Jack Chrissy. Mm -hmm. I made a joke to him. The first. Do do you all know Jack Chrissy? Yeah. uh, uh, Everyone knows Jack Chrissy. Yeah, everyone knows. He's he's a legend in the scene. Uh, (laughs) For, yeah, for looking like he's 17. (laughs) And I love him so much. But the first time I met him, he was, like, fucking with me. And as a joke... I was like, Jack, have you ever been punched in the face before? Mm-hmm. Because he was saying shit where I was like, if you said that to anyone who was not a comic, you would get punched in the face. Yeah. But I said it as a joke, and he took it as like, Greg really wants to fight me. <laughs> and it was like the first time we met, so <laughs> it was not it was not good. So like, hey, take it easy. Like, like, take it, it easy. No, nah, dude, like, because when you actually showed up to the scene, another comic that I'm sure people have already mentioned this. Yeah, let's get, out, let's get out of the way yeah, early in the podcast. Bro, this is Chris Rivley number two, like, of the scene, essentially. Have you, you've never met him, have you? No, I, I've met Chris Rivley. We've okay. talked about this. My, not you, you and I, but yeah. I, me and Chris. Uh, my very first show in Durham, I did with Chris Rivley, like, right uh-huh. before he left. And Chris was like, we both acknowledged that we looked like each other. <laughs> And we were like, this is going to be a problem. It's scary how, yeah. how like, close you guys look, like look. I try not to mention it as because it's like uh, he probably already gets yeah. that enough from everybody. And so yeah. we let, do. We do look alike. But where's where's the camera? I am taller. <laughs> I am quite quite a bit taller. Oh. If you're watching this, Chris. Bro. <laughs> Sh- shouts out to Chris, bro. I hope New York is treating you well. Yeah. Um. But no, yeah. After he left and you came in, like, I, I, we really just kind of clicked. I feel like. Yeah, for sure. Because the next time I met you it was at that house party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. We talked for a while there. Yeah. That, that cool. house party was fun as fuck. I keep mentioning it because to me it was like an existential event. Like to me at, at the time, like it was like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. It was weird to just like walk around and see comedy people in like a non comedy situation. Right. Like, because no. Everyone just thought it was like a Christmas party. I, I was like, oh, this is this is about to turn into Project X at some point. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I see the keg, and then everybody's outside, like, passing the joint around. And I'm just like, bro, this is about to be fun as fuck. Yeah, people hitting all, all sorts of things. All sorts of things. Delta 8 here in North Carolina. Delta is that eight. is that a strain of COVID or weed? The weed. <laughs> hmm. No, I think the Delta variant is the uh-huh. COVID thing. Yeah. I think I got Delta 8 COVID. No, <laughs> no I think I... They're both the same. You know, it's weird. They, they both hit the same. <laughs> yeah. One one kills you and the other one kills you, but like in your lungs. You, you, you can't breathe after both of them. I yeah, think. essentially. But yeah, yeah, that party was sick. And then like, because we uh, we were talking about our fits. You you have, and the last guest I had on here, Devin, also is very fashionable. You, you Oh, j- you're putting me in that same category as yeah. Devin? Oh, wow. Dog, because like, I'm gonna what tell are you wearing De- I'm going right to tell now? Devin like, that. What is... What is this uh, is uh, Moroccan fur. No, it's not. This is uh, this is Puma. Yeah, no, that shit's fire. I have yet to see like I've Dude, seen that I, style, but like not branded. You should get one. First of all, this is like wearing a beanbag chair. It's yeah. amazing. I wear this to every show I do, mm-hmm. which I probably shouldn't. I think I've washed it once. Uh, I probably shouldn't have admitted that, but um, <laughs> it's so comfortable. I think it looks good. 
And I like, I never want to take it off. My, my girlfriend, she's like annoyed that I wear this so much. Yeah. Like I want to wear this in bed and she's like, you I was going to say, you would think she would like it. Cause it's so like, it looks soft. Like you're Chewbacca. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> Chewbacca. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. cause I've always wanted one of those like hoodies, but I felt like if I did it, like I would really look like a bear. Like I'd look like Smokey Bear. <laughs> it does kind of have bear vibes. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. But, but that's kind of what you want. Like, well, I guess not this year, North Carolina has been mad fucking warm in the winter. Yeah. Like to what today it was like 72 or something. Yeah. It was weird. I checked my weather app this morning. I was like 50. I was like, fuck yeah, it's cold. I can bust out like a thick hoodie. And then I, I know. had to swap. When it's cold, you like have better clothing that you can wear. Like you can pull out jackets from your closet and stuff mm-hmm. that you haven't pulled out in a while. Are yeah. you a sh- are you a shoe guy? Like, do you rock with like the kind shoe culture? Of, I I always I always felt like uh, I didn't belong in shoe culture. Mm-hmm. I just felt like shoe guys know way more. I kind of feel the same way about shoes. I feel about cars. Mm-hmm. Like, I appreciate them. I love them. I want them. But I can't hang with people who are like real car guys or yeah. real shoe guys. Like dudes that just like are they're like oh you know any time any chance that I get I'm in my garage like eight hours a day working yeah. on the car. Guys who are like waking up at three a.m. to buy like. Like the new color sways of mm-hmm. Nike SBs on East Bay, yeah, that yeah, yeah, like yeah. just got released or something. Like, there's oh. very few times I would actually like think about like getting a bot just to get a shoe. Like there's very few times I've actually done it. Like, so you're uh, you're a shoe guy? A little bit. I don't like you know I'm not Gary Miller, but if you've ever <laughs> met him, yeah, but, I've met him. Yeah, but yeah. like he, that guy is definitely the king of the shoes in the scene. Like he, he's always. Uh, Either talking about it whenever I'm seeing him, or like he's posting about like, oh, I just got this drop, and it's just like, damn, I wish I could. That could be me. Yeah, but the thing is, like, when you buy shoes like that, aren't you scared that you're just gonna get them dirty immediately? You wear them once. So I try not to get shoes that are like past a certain amount, where it's like, if I fuck these up, I can't get another pair. You know what I mean? Like mm. the most expensive pair of shoes I've ever gotten was like a a, a Yeezy 500, like a, a like a 500 a utility black, and those were like. Four hundred and eighty dollars for a size thirteen. Yeah, but like they retail at like two twenty or something like that. Do you still wear your Yeezys? No, I sold them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I can't, dude. Like, I can't stress after every the day. Lex Friedman <laughs> podcast. You put that shits on eBay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I made my resale back, so I sold them for like five forty. Damn, so I made a, a solid hundred and forty dollars. It was a hundred and something dollar profit. You off pay of like four four hundred. Yeah. Because I was like, if I'm going to sell these, I better make them. Because I only wore them once, and I was fucking sweating at the club. Like, just like, <laughs> I hope nobody steps on these. But not, I, I want to go back to the part where you said that I uh, am one of the best fit people in the scene. No, yeah. There's, um, go ahead. Talk your shit. Because I've always felt like I've not been a good dresser. Mm-hmm. But then recently with COVID, I've just been wearing like anything casual. Like my outfits now are just like sweatpants. Or, like, these are, like, Vioris, which I feel like mm-hmm. they sponsor every podcast in existence. <laughs> um, that and, like, Athletic Greens. Well, because, like, the thing about fashion is that not a lot of people are start, are getting is that it's not the it's not the brand all the time. It's how you wear the color. Mm. So, like, your, your template, your color palette has to fit yeah. with your outfit or else it's going to look out of whack. Like, some people can just wear whatever you want color wise and it'll still look good like you can wear bright red with like a yellow pair of pants yeah, yeah. you know and you'll look like ronald mcdonald but if it's like if in a fashionable your, yeah. way then you're sure. like oh okay ronald mcdonald if he was sponsored by louis vuitton like <laughs> like it's fine but um certain people they'll be wearing normal clothes and they'll be like you could wear that but like at least kind of figure out what kind of colorway you want to wear i'm always surprised by like the some of the outfits that comedians wear on stage mm-hmm. seems just like not very conducive to comedy. Like sometimes I'll see people wear like clothes that don't fit their on stage persona, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you gotta think about that a little more. There's a there's a couple comics that that I feel like if they would put a little bit more effort into like their outfits, I'm not saying this is gonna like help them comedy wise. They're just there to tell jokes. But I feel like like there'd be more of an appeal to like it makes a difference yeah. with your like who you are on like your persona. Mm-hmm. I'm like not... I think uh, Aaron Ransom kind of like leans into his, his aspect little, like, a little yeah, bit. His his very like I don't know what you would call uh, it rough I, and me, tumble or something. Yeah, like I'd call it like punk rock kind of like vibe. Yeah, he's, he's like always wearing punk like, rock redneck. He's always wearing like the the sleeveless leather, like the jean jacket the with jean, like yeah. either like a like a plaid shirt and then like boot cut jeans. He's like yeah, it like fits his aesthetic. Is he an Amazon delivery guy? Oh, I have no idea. I think I've seen him show up to. 
a mic in his like Amazon delivery outfit. <laughs> and I think that would be a fire costume or not costume, but just like an outfit to wear for a live special taping. If you yeah. could blur out the Amazon part. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that kind of just, it fits his personality. I don't know. You know who good. does, who do be coming into work? Uh, I call it work. Uh, coming into sh uh, mics like in their work outfit is, you know, uh, Wafik. Yeah. Wafik yeah. But that's because he's literally, as soon as the work clock just ends, he's like, he I got to hit the mic. From, I don't know if you can say, can you say that where he works on, on here? I probably wouldn't, but. He goes straight from a company we will not name <laughs> who uh, I currently am in business with. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, that's uh, a, they're pretty big. It's, a it's hard to avoid company. them. I would like to. Yeah, it's about everywhere. Not, not with Feek, though. I love with Feek. I just did nah. a show with him recently. Yeah, with Feek, like, come on, like, and he's a salesman, so sometimes he's really, like, he'll wear, like, the shirt with the company logo and just be out there, or he'll really be balling and, like, really dapper up. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he looks like i uh, I've seen him wear, like, a tie before. Yeah, like a like a suit. Yeah. Like, he'll come out with a suit and his little ha and his hat. Not a little that's a, hat. That's it's, a flex. Yeah, that's a real fucking, like, noir style yeah. he's got. And I, I respect with that. that. Yeah. I respect that. And then there's like, cause streetwear, like a lot of us in the comic scene would wear streetwear. Like that's essentially what I got on right now. Like the hoodie and then the yeah. skinnies and then the dunks. It's essentially like. I just, mean, comics are street people. Exactly. Like, that's like who we are. <laughs> so like there's some people and then there's some people that will just show up and like, like they just woke up that morning. Yeah. And that's just, you know, that's their thing. You know, they don't care about their outfit and that's, that's fair. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. trying to judge them. Please don't take this as hate. Like, I really do appreciate everyone in the community. Just, you know. Everything I say is based from hate. <laughs> tie it up. I'm tired of seeing Andrew. Is there anyone that the you shows. hate in the scene that you want to talk about right now? Anyone that I hate in the scene? Yeah. I actually don't hate anybody. Okay. So no right one now. whose name that you want to you wanna drop right now? No. I mean, you. well, you want to go down a list to see if I hate people? Yeah. How about I list people and you say if you hate them or not? <laughs> We'll start with number one, Jack Chrissy. Jack Chrissy? I love Jack Chrissy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I because he used to call me all the time and like we used to just chat and like bounce ideas off of each other. I feel like he got busy and so like he doesn't do that anymore. And I kind of miss those calls. Yeah. I miss those voices. Dude, he, so we talk on the phone sometimes. Mm -hmm. First of all, when we became friends, he went from zero to 100 right away. He started calling me like twice a day. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, bro, I work. And he was like, Gr oh. Mm -hmm. Greg, okay, Greg works. Oh. <laughs> I was like, dude, I have a job. I can't just be talking to you all day. This is 3 p.m. Like, <laughs> you can't expect me to pick up. And we, we like, would bounce ideas for jokes off each other. But Jack will do this thing where, like, I don't know. He'll he'll be like, can I play you a song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he'll just start playing the guitar over the phone to you, and it'll be, like, an eight-minute song. And he, when someone sings to you, you can't interrupt, so you just got to listen. You got to let it rock. Yeah, you got to let it rock. <laughs> no, I, I remember, because I used to work in construction, and so I really, there's no rules in construction. It's the wild, wild west out there. So I, anytime he'd call, I'd have my AirPods in, and I'm just, you know. You can just pick up call, yeah, calls Yeah, I can just pick work. up a call and just do what I'm doing, And because I was uh, an electrician. Yeah, yeah. So really all we're doing is wiring the houses and making sure all the lights are in. So while he's doing that, he's literally hearing my drill as of like talking to him. He's like, oh, it sounds busy. I'm just like, yeah. oh, no, that's just me. Like, this I'm is just a bad time <laughs> to sing you my songs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell him, I was like, no, I'm cool. it's cool. Like, I welcome it, dude. Just let me know. And then now that I work uh, the sales job, I think he tried calling me a couple of times. And then I had to like, I was with a customer, so I had to put that shit on silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, I, he doesn't call me anymore. And I'm, I'm like, uh, sad. But oh, well. Yeah, I got to give him a call because we haven't, uh, I think the ball's definitely in my court now. But I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't I seen him Chris. in a while, like, uh, cause he, cause Good Nights closed for a little bit, yeah. And obviously, you know, when Good Nights closes for a little bit, everybody that was working there, you know, is doing their own thing, yeah. So I haven't really seen him, but I've also haven't been in the scene for a little bit either, cause yeah. I've been on my gym what? grind. Yeah, you've been, yeah, dude, you've been grinding. I just see you posting stuff on Instagram, mm -hmm. just eleven thirty p.m. at the gym, just doing like, Bruh, just. You know, doing it, chest, bench. chest and bicep, or no, chest and triceps, I think, are, is like Monday. I have like a whole schedule that I need to follow. And then, I don't know what it is, but every time I look at your stories, I'm always on the couch, like eating Indian food, watching uh -huh. Netflix. And then I see you like in the gym, just putting up weight. And I'm like, fuck. You know what's crazy? <laughs> it I'm makes me want to get after it. I'm actually like mad unhealthy, though. Like not in like a, I'm eating junk food all the time. Like I don't eat enough. Like the reverse. <laughs> yeah. So like I actually... I'm trying to be on a deficit, but I noticed that my calorie intake before was like 4,000 calories or something like that. Cause I was eating before so much. Before you were working yeah, out. Yeah. So I was like eating a lot of junk food 
And so essentially what I've learned is that normal people should only eat about like 400 to 600 calories. So me, I think what I've been doing just is per just meal or in per day. day. Yeah. Four to six. That seems really low. It, that's what I said, too. But that also might be the the health video that I watched because I don't know what how many pe calories yeah. people should normally. This, this, this came you from know. an account called yeah. Flat Earth or 37. <laughs> <laughs> dude science is just weird sometimes medical science is sometimes very weird because like yeah, they'll say one thing and, they'll say one thing and then your doctor will be like oh no don't believe that like listen to what i'm saying dude my girlfriend's a, a nurse in the icu and i i tell her daily how much i uh, uh i don't believe the medical industry <laughs> no well, i do i do but eh, I like, they have some questions but low-key because like i have i had a doctor once tell me uh that i was allergic to peanut butter because they, I told them that I used to always eat a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as a kid. And so they were like, all right, well, we're going to have to trick this kid into not eating that so that he could lose weight. I was like 14. I was like trying to like, I was like, oh, well, this is all I eat. Like, because I yeah, really yeah. can't eat anything else. And so they told me I was allergic to peanut butter and I was so fucking depressed. I was like, damn, dude, just really? Just to not to not eat it. And like so, you weren't actually allergic to it? No, they just were trying to get me to stop eating like all these foods because yeah. they were like fattening. And so like one day I kind of just said, fuck it. Like, fuck my doctor. I'm just going to eat like a sandwich. <laughs> and I ate it and I was like, I'll accept the consequences. I had my EpiPen on me and shit. And then uh, nothing happened. I was like, God, oh, that fucking doctor lied to me. Yeah. It was, I was so upset. I was like, damn, I, I haven't eaten peanut butter in like five years. And then the one day I eat it, I was just like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> So do you, what do you eat now? Like, you, you, are you doing 400 to 600 calories or are you eating more now? So me, I kind of only eat one meal a day. Okay. I eat one meal a day and then everything else. If I'm like starving, I'll eat a snack. So like my main meal is always midday. So like right before we started filming, like maybe a couple hours or so, I went over to my mom's house and she made like fajitas with rice, you know. Oh, that sounds fire. Yeah. And so, but like what she, she knows that I'm on this like calorie deficit plan. She hates it, but like she knows that, you know, if you're going to eat, come eat at the house. Yeah. And so I ate and then I, I, there wasn't really a way to track it, but like grilled chicken, grilled veggies and then rice, that's, that's should be enough. Yeah. So I'll eat That's, that, uh, and then in between, like if I'm really hungry, I'll get like a granola bar, or I'll get a, like a protein shake or a meal prep. But then, but you work out at night, don't you? Yeah, and then I run in the morning. So you you never get hungry at nighttime when you're when I'm like chilling. Shut up, Siri. Damn, Siri <laughs> always bugging in. She always chime. We should have a you should have a segment that's just her asking questions. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, no, I'm not about to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so do you like Jack Chrissy? So I also like I indulge in the the green so munchies is an, an unavoidable thing for me yeah but i like to say that i'm a functioning uh toker because i could kind of know what i'm eating that way i don't stray into like eating junk food all the time like i have veggie straws at the crib or yeah. i have like a special k cereal bro oh special k is fire <laughs> yo that when you're like super fried, when you're high special k hits dude why do we sleep on that as kids i never liked it well, i don't know if i didn't like it but i just like i don't know you want sugary ass cereal when you're mm -hmm. a kid i was eating like having crunch and shit. but now as an adult special k is a treat see growing up i always would fire. put people on the honey bunches of oats yeah, and yeah everybody yeah. was like you're fucking crazy Frosted no, that flakes. Shit's great and i'm just like dog no. you get a cluster Fire. Shit's crazy good. So good. It's yeah. like a it's like a fucking mine in the ocean. Like cinnamon weird. life. You yeah. like cinnamon life? I do know about mm. that. You know what's uh what is it? Frosted Wheaties? Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do anything frosted. Frosted yeah. Cheerios, I'll dunk on that. I love it. So but like as a kid, I would always like I found Special K through like the vanilla almond one is the is the best out of the, the special vanilla K almond one. cluster. Okay. That one's fucking fire. Yeah, but yeah. I would eat that if I ever got high and then like I'm, you know, playing video games and just watching a movie or watching anime. Like Dude, if I get high, it's game over for me, like in terms of eating. Like I if I get high, I'm eating I'm a reptile. Like I'll eat anything in the kitchen. I'll like I've made meals before that make no sense. I'd be like, oh, ketchup and uh bread mm -hmm. and random cheese. Sure, that's a meal. And I'll just I don't know, I'll put stuff together, make smoothies. Dude, I had a crazy I had a humble moment the other day. Uh, so I was at a, uh, a homie's house. We were all kind of just watching because this is when Puss in Boots, that movie came out, and we all got super stoked, like uh, fried, and wanted to watch it. And I got mad hungry, and they had no food in the crib. And I see that they had like potato bread, like <laughs> <laughs> there, chill it. And I was like, oh, they have yet to touch this. I'm going to kill this. So I start grabbing like a few. I walk back to the couch, and they're like, what the fuck do you have in your head, Alex? And I'm like, 
oh, it's potato bread. They're like, you got anything in between those buns? No. And I'm like, nah, dude. Just straight bread. This shit's fucking fire. Bro, they are yeah. all just clowning me, dude. Like, I don't get it. Potato bread by itself is fire. But yeah, I mean, bread in general is just good alone. Like, I'll eat flour tortillas without anything on it. Mm. I'll just throw that shit down. I had an art teacher that told me about peanut butter and flour tortillas and just Ooh, that's a hack. use that. Yeah, he used to be like, this is the only way I don't eat the lunch here. And I was like, oh, wow. Peanut butter and flour tortillas. He'd have like a little drawer with like the bag of tortillas and then the, the jar of peanut butter. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. I'd asked him for one, and, and he said no, but then on the last day of class, I, I asked him, I was like, please, could I have one? And he's like, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> he's like, this is the last time I'm going to see you. You're a senior. I was like, all right, bet. Oh, this is a high school teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm taking you off. <laughs> what does she respond to? Siri? Yeah. Oh, something like that. I don't know. I think it's my wrist. I have, like, you know, big wrists. I, I only, whenever I go to the gym, like, it does that, too. So I'll put it, like, here. So that not mm. only is it still detecting like my heart rate, but like it's just there. It looks cooler. So does your mom? Y your mom lives around here, and you go and see her. Yeah, she's that's like dope. she's like twenty thirty minutes away from the studio. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I I try to see her before I come in. If not, then I mean next week. Yeah, it's cool to come over and just like hang out, and eat some dinner or mm -hmm. something. I feel like so my family is are are your family immigrants? My my mm -hmm. family's immigrants from Italy. And I feel like immigrants don't get diets. They don't understand, like, oh, you're trying to change how you're eating. Yeah. Like, my, so my girlfriend's gluten free. Mm -hmm. And, but she's like celiac disease. Like, she can't eat gluten. Oh. And my grandma, I'm Italian. So, like, there's gluten in fucking every, everything. I have, I have a joke yeah. about this, but like, there's gluten in everything. And so I took her to see my grandmother because she wanted to meet my grandmother one time. Explaining to my grandmother what gluten free is is damn near impossible. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, there's someone who doesn't want to eat pasta. How does that work? I don't, I don't compute that. She so, just doesn't get it. So my mom, my dad was a lot faster on kind of like m figuring out like, oh, we're all different. You know, everything's yeah. different now. So I have to adjust to like the whole gluten free or like because my sisters were going through a period where like they couldn't eat anything because their metabolism or something like that was like fucking up their stomach anytime they ate normal food. So they had to make like uh like vegan food or like they had to be on a vegan diet for a little while. And so my mom was like fucking stressed for like one day was like how the fuck am i gonna change up everything like this is a lot and then the next day she's making vegan meals and it's like oh this is actually pretty good oh she adapted yeah she Congrats, adapted mom. really quick there you but go she's also like been in the restaurant business so like i could tell that she kind of like she just put shit together and was like all right this works yeah yeah my dad was a lot faster on that though he was more faster on like the change of meals versus like because obviously mental health kind of came in later and was like, oh, yeah, like immigrants don't give a fuck about mental health. Nah, it's not even in their vocabulary. Yeah, it's like, they don't even, like, what is mental health? Like, you want to go to a therapist? What mm -hmm. does that even mean? Are you that, depressed? That's what? extra money. Just watch PBS yeah. Kids. But your dad, so your dad's like adaptive. Yeah, my dad, it took him longer to like kind of accept mental health. because oh, okay. You're like, saying, but food was quick. But not, food was super not quick, but health. everything else was like super hard for both of them. Yeah. Because my mom... uh she used to be like, why is like, why is everybody looking at me crazy? And then she found out she she had bipolar disorder. And oh, I was okay. Like, oh. I was like, oh, that explains it. And yeah. then she adapted quickly. My dad just didn't like the fact that like, because Mexican parents are like depression. That's for the weak. Exactly. Like, like you're never exactly. sad. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. So like for them, it was a lot harder. And then I mean, this could go for any Latino parent or any immigrant parent. Like depression is just like. It's like a, a like a pebble being thrown at you. Like that shouldn't matter. Well, and I feel like there's like uh like some I don't know what it's called, like there's strength they view sometimes like strength as like being able to fight down anything and deal mm -hmm. with any problem and like the idea of like mental health or being anxious or depressed is not really doesn't fit with that. It means mm -hmm. like you're succumbing. In, in their mind, maybe it means that you're succumbing to something rather than, like, defeating something. Yeah, because, like, my— It's a misconception. Because, like, when they started, like, growing us growing up, we kind of—we obviously had it a lot easier than they did. You know, they come here, and then they, they're like, oh, first thing you're going to do, bus job. That's how you're going to pay your apartment. Like, did yeah. where did your, your parents immigrated to? Like, because there's obviously different parts that they would go to, and then they would start there. Yeah. Like, mine started in New York. Okay, did they go? Th uh, okay, so they went straight to New York. Yeah, okay, they went dope. straight to New York, and nice. then they went to Pennsylvania, and then or Philadelphia, and then they went here. Is that? And then you were born here. 
I was born in New York. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so I got that rep, that street Yeah, rep. how long were you in New York for? Like two months? Uh, no, actually, so I was born there. They went to New, they went to North Carolina, and then I would go back and forth. So technically, I was raised there for like okay most of my childhood. I could see you as a as a New York guy. Oh man, I fucking love New York, but I, I also bet. love here. Like it, it's nothing bad here. Like it's so chill. I just feel like you could get into the, like the streetwear scene over mm-hmm. there and like Soho. Dude, I've thought about starting a clothing brand. Have you? Yeah. Dude, my, I have a really, really good friend who uh, went to fashion school mm-hmm. and is a really good shoe designer, actually. Oh, fuck. But maybe I'll link you guys up when he visits. He's coming in like a month or two. But Definitely do that. Yeah, because I'm because now that I have this, I'm working on merch. like uh, For the show? Exclusive. Santa merch, Price? yeah. Yeah, some crazy like merch designs I'll show you like after the pod. Yes. But, like, it's uh it's gonna be big whenever uh we start doing the merch. I mean, mainly like the studio as a whole is evolving like as we keep going. So like it's gonna be the what we got planned in the future is gonna be sick. Yeah, dude. When I walked in here I had no idea what to expect. I thought it was just your place. Yeah. Because you just gave me the address, you were uh-huh. like show up at six. And I came here and there's just like multiple studio. I mean, I don't know if I can say behind the scenes what it looks like here, but uh, this place is dope. No, yeah, this, it's like a little wonderland of. I mean, video the, production. The hard work that the guys at Manly Studios, like Manly Girly Studios, like they put in hella work to make everything look how it is now, and like nothing but respect for those guys. Yeah, can we give the round of applause? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I had an idea for because I used to go by a name Pseudo Boy on my Instagram, and for a while I wanted to start a clothing brand called Pseudo Boy Co. And it was just going to be a little ghost icon, and then I'd fuck around and mess around with it and kind of see where it go. I like that. But then that, I obviously, I don't go by that anymore. I started comedy, and now a side of fries is going to be the, the, the That's place. That's the brand. Where, yeah. Okay. Which is going to be sick, because I got, like I said, I got plans, bro, up you here in plans. the noggin. But, um, yeah, l- living in New York was mad cool, like, in the years that I would go back and forth, because, I mean, I already kind of grew up with, like, a punk like emo family like my siblings were like all into like rock and like alternative indie and then you know hip-hop obviously came in so when i'd go back and forth like my brothers would always tell me like oh here like we're listening to nas like or you know listening to jay-z and then i'd go over there and i'd take in all the culture from there it's just mad cool like such a cool like experience to have to grow up on that kind of music Mm -hmm. like imagine if you were growing up in like iowa (laughs) <laughs> your music is just like whatever you listen to in Iowa right but like when you're in New York yeah you got like Illmatic you listen to Illmatic mm-hmm. you got like I don't know Mary J. Blanche whoever people listen and to and then like I mean cause here you could you, you can go to like I would say Durham is probably like the the, the big area for music mm. and then Raleigh is just like um, I would think I don't know what I would call Raleigh like as a, a mecca for something but I know here in Durham like there's a lot of uh there are a lot of like pop up shows. Like musicians would go and they'll yeah, do yeah. like. There's more musician open mics in Durham than there are comedy. Yeah, no, there are. Durham's not a comedy town at all. Yeah, it's, but I mean, but they got some music stuff. But they got literally. There's one mic there that's like literally huge, in my opinion. The, yeah. the Dirty Bull. Yeah, Dirty Bull. I love doing Dirty Bull. I haven't been there in a fat minute, but it's gotten to a point where like, dude, the, it's it's grown. I just went on Friday. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I was telling him before the show, and it, it was massive. Like, I mean, there was maybe like. I want to say 50, 60 audience, Mm -hmm. non-comics there, which is great, like, for a mic. Yeah, and then, like, there's that little area where, like, all the comics are, like, kind of chilling, and it's just like, this is is a a vibe, yeah. And it's nice because, like, then you actually give feedback about jokes rather Mm -hmm. than, it's hard telling comics jokes because half the time they're not listening to you yeah, doing their own stuff. They're trying to figure out what they want to say. Yeah, I don't blame them for that. And, like, you know, they also know your style. They know your bits, so, like, they're not gonna give you the feedback as much as like someone who's just here to see comedy. Mm-hmm. So it's good. I, I like I like Dirty Bull a lot. Yeah, I need a I need to hit that mic. But like low key, the sign up process to me is kind of like mm, it's, it's a good, little whack. It's a little weird. It's a little whack. But it is what it is. But That's, it's a big show though. Like I can't, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're putting up like twenty five comics mm-hmm. during that mic. So yeah, shouts out to them. Uh, I think it's uh Ashley. Ashley, yeah, mm-hmm. and Ebony. and Ebony, yeah. yeah. Forgot their last names, so I apologize. Talking but uh Ashley Preston, Ebony Angelique. There we go. Heck yeah. Doing Wouldn't know what I'm new on the me. scene. Fuck yeah. Uh what are you gonna do comedy again? I haven't seen you do we did a show together in Chapel Hill. We did a uh, while ago. Yeah, at uh, uh Z- oh, it's not, it was yeah. like Zogs, but Zogs underneath. Dude, I feel like because I was talking to Devin about it the last time, like I feel like my writing like has just 
been put to a halt. Like I've reached a plateau in my writing that like I can't write anything down and then I'll stop midway and be like, this is ass and just like crinkle up the paper and throw it away. I see. Yeah. And, and so like Devin actually gave me a really good idea and it, it was like, go to open mics, write down a list of prompts that you want to use. And then kind of just go down the list and be like, all right, let's see what's what's grabbing the attention of people. And like work with it, the prompts, just yeah. almost improv something. Uh-huh. And yeah, then that's good. from there, kind of mark whichever ones you think are like good or like ones that worked and then just work from them. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to do that. Have uh, you been a writer? Like, how do you how did you used to write jokes before you kind of hit this plateau? Just so like, how I would write it was the first thing that kind of came to my head would be like a certain event or something that happened to me. Like I'll use an old joke for a, a joke that I don't use anymore. I had a friend at Applebee's uh, that we all went to Applebee's all the time because in our hometown there's nothing good in there but to go to Applebee's yeah. or go to Walmart. That's what Applebee's is for. Yeah, and so we always had a friend who never paid for anything. And so actually it wasn't at Applebee's, it was at McDonald's. So he never paid for anything, but for whatever reason – this lady at 12 o'clock at night was like, oh, they fucked up my order here. You have it. And it's a whole big Big Mac meal with fucking extra McChickens. And we're just looking at him like, it's always you that gets these shits. You don't yeah, you deserve it. <laughs> free hand. Up. Yeah. And so like the what I would do is I'd be like top main topic would be like, oh, friend gets free meal. And then I would like kind of widen that idea you know, explain why we don't like him getting free meals, like yeah. this and that. Are we assholes? Yeah. Like, stuff like that. And then from there, I'll kind of expand it. I'll write it like a script, kind of. Mm. And then I'll go try it out at a mic and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have to revamp it and then go back. So it sounds like you're, you're like, editing yourself now mm-hmm. too much during the writing process where yeah. it's, like, stopping you from getting anywhere. Like, you're just too self-critical. Yeah, it's it's super bad. And I know a lot of people kind of deal with that, too, like, I, I, already. Yeah, I get that. I'm so critical. I had to start doing this thing recently where I realized that when I was writing jokes, I was trying too hard to like have them be polished jokes the mm-hmm. second that I finished writing them. And I was like, this is not going to be, I'm not just going to write a final draft right away. Like you would never write an essay or a poem mm-hmm. or a script for a TV show or anything. And the first time it comes out, it's just the final product. So I was like, all right, I got to find ways to like not care about the end result. Mm-hmm. And so what I started doing was just ranting by writing, like writing a rant, Mm -hmm. like picking a topic that I had a lot of opinions on. It could be whatever, like my girlfriend being Mm gluten-free and just going ham and just like whatever thought that I came came to mind, just writing paragraphs about it. And then I would highlight sentences that were funny or ideas in it that were funny and be like, okay, this is a, I'm building towards a joke here. Okay. And that like gave it legs and made me feel like Oh, there's like a progression that you can take. So I think for me, my because I had I kind of realized that I had a bad habit in high school when it comes to like because obviously we'd had to write papers and shit. Anytime I'd have to write a paper, I'd blow it off until like the last hour or so. Yeah. And then in that hour, I would try and knock something out. And for whatever reason, every time I've done that, they've all just been A's, oh. like hundreds or like A's. Like, oh, these are great. That's like, when you do your best work. Yeah, is it's last like when minute. I, yeah, last minute. So Damn, like, I wish I had that. And so, like, I feel like I get so used to that that whenever I'm writing these jokes and then I go up and then they don't do well, I'm just like, fuck, I suck. And it's like, that's yeah. my biggest habit is, like, yeah. that's my that's my worst habit. It's, like, working on something last minute and then expecting it to be as good as it was before. Yeah. You know what's crazy? I listen to, you know who Tom Segura is, mm-hmm. the comedian YMH podcast? I was listening to his podcast recently and he was talking about how that little voice in your head that tells you that you're not a good comedian after you tell a joke that doesn't work Mm -hmm. he he still has that yeah he'll like come off he'll come off stage after like on tour and he'll have a bad show or a joke that doesn't go well and he'll still have that voice in his head that's like you ain't shit Mm -hmm. and that's it almost reassured me to know that like all right we all we all have that Mm -hmm. and it's it's not like you know it's just about like i guess pushing through that shit I don't know. I think for uh, for some people, it's super easy to do that. Like, I, I mean, I feel like you because you've been uh, you're new to the scene. I I don't want to like hype you up, but you have been mad successful with like getting oh, thanks, shows man. and stuff like that. Like, that. it's it's very few times we'll see new people like really like proceed like faster than anybody else. Not saying that everyone like should end up like that. Like, for some people it hits, and then some people it doesn't. You know, that's just yeah, yeah. part of people's crafts, part of the journey. 
nobody's gonna have that express way unless you know you work really hard for it and like you you've been working mad hard for it yeah for sure i, I could tell because you're you always got book in hand you're always writing and then you're you know, you're talking to the comics and getting your feedback. Yeah, I mean, I just take it really seriously, mm -hmm. which sometimes doesn't make me friends with yeah. people because uh, I spend more time, like, thinking about the jokes than I do maybe, like, hanging out with people sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I feel like the more I do comedy, the more I realize how much it is just kind of figuring it out yourself mm -hmm. and, like, how you want to communicate yourself on stage. And I feel like that happens at different times for different people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I know my, for me, like, whenever I'm on stage, I try my hardest to impress the other comics because I feel like yeah. that's, that's the one thing you need to do. You want that, like, affirmation. Yeah, same, from yeah. them versus, like, the crowd when really you should be working on the crowd than yeah, your peers yeah. because your peers are the ones that are going to be like, uh, well, I mean, if that's your best work, then he, you better try harder, you know? Like, and not. You know. I know. I Trust me. Like, my worst fear is a comic coming up to me afterwards and being like, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> that's like that would destroy me i'd be like i don't know if i'd do comedy for like a week after that you know what's worse than that nobody coming up to you and saying what they could what could be done better because like the worst it's it's better for me to get told it's bad than nobody saying nothing at all yeah because then it's like well what what can i do better like what can i do like i'm True. really trying to like be out here and like be as good as you guys but like i understand if you don't want to tell me anything that's fair you don't know me or like you may not want to let me know whatever or you just don't have any feedback but like at least you know kind of help a boy out well now i'm happy to tell you when your sets are bad <laughs> uh, when yeah because I, no, yeah, sure. I would much, i'd much rather prefer that than nothing i think people are afraid of um telling people that i think it's hard because i think some people don't take criticism well. i was gonna say that's another thing too is that like I, yeah a lot of, a lot of people really don't like being told that they suck yeah I mean, uh, listen, I'm I'm one of them. I'd be a hypocrite if I said I wasn't. But uh -huh. like, criticism's hard. Like, if some, I mean, it's. There, I think there's a good way to give it. Like, you you don't have to say that you suck, but you could be like, hey, this joke, it might be better if you did this, uh -huh. and that would be helpful, right? Rather than just being like, I fucking hated it. Yeah, like for me, because I've all, I, and this is about to sound sad as fuck. I've always been told that I sucked, so I'm so used to that feedback. In comedy or just in life in general. Like I've always been told that I was like like. The worst or man fuck those like people that. they don't get a side of fries <laughs> they they don't no they get the worst kind of fries. i feel like you need a side of fries whenever someone says that you cue like <laughs> some kind of sound effect or like a graphic that goes like Ding. Ding. Yeah. yeah or i i'm i want to get a a, a sound bar or, or like a, a sound pad and just have the air horn <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly like, someone tells a, a bad joke and you just go <laughs> right like you get jack chrissy on and he yeah. just talks and you just go <laughs> Just whatever he says. <laughs> oh damn! I need to get him on. There's a lot of there's there's quite a bit of folks that I need to get on here. Nah, you don't need to get him on. It's all right. <laughs> You're right. This, <laughs> this is my podcast, not theirs. But um, yeah, no. Um, again, dude, you've been you've been killing it lately. Thanks, like man. that last show we did. Uh, the imbibe. Is that how you pronounce it? I guess. I, I don't know. know. I, I always called it in Bible. And in then Bible? I, <laughs> that's actually pretty, yeah, that's funny. It's just like, oh, uh, no, wrong. That food, the food there was mad good, actually. It was good? Yeah, because, so I had my friend from work come, because she's always wanted to see me do stand-up, and that was actually one of the first nights that I, I came back. I had no prep work or anything like that prior. I yeah. didn't hit a mic or anything like that. So you were just fresh? I was fresh. And then, you know, doing that, it felt like, it felt good. She said I was good, but then again, she could just be a friend. Like, and be like, I oh. mean, you look comfortable up there for being just fresh. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck. It were, felt, you, were you not comfortable? It, it, it felt like it went by fast because they, he gave you, he gave us yeah. eight minutes. Yeah. I mean, eight there weren't ten. a lot of people there or a lot of laughter for anyone. So it just like, when uh -huh. that happens, you just kind of burn yeah. through material. <laughs> Yeah, so it just felt really fast. So when it, whenever it, it was like I got the light, I was like, "Oh shit, damn, we're already done." Yeah. Damn. Okay. Let yeah. me finish it off, and then you know, after that, you sit down and watch everyone else like kill, or not. You know, I everyone that was on that show actually killed. So, but then again, like you said, there wasn't a lot of people there. So, I think yeah, we did well with what we had uh -huh. in the in the room. It's hey, good. I got a I got a uh, they they had a chicken parm at that restaurant. It was pretty fucking fire, uh, like a chicken, chicken parm sandwich. Parm. I love chicken parm. Fucking love I can't really eat a lot before I do stand up, but I love mm -hmm. going in on some food afterwards. I used to get really fried going on stage, and then that ding. That's where the. <laughs> sorry, 
I used to get like mad stoned and then go on stage and then that used to be the act was my persona like just me kind of just like, being stoned just being stoned was it and then I noticed that I would never remember anything and it I feel like it was mad disrespectful to like to the art like just you know oh you don't have any jokes or you don't have anything like that you're just up there to be a fool like a clown and I'm just like I mean it can work but yeah you have you have to have jokes mm -hmm. like i've seen people try that i got stoned once before a show and i never did it again because mm -hmm. i was like i forget everything mm -hmm. like i was stumbling through my set and i was like i can't do this yeah or like for me i'd always be like damn i'm stoned guys i'm sorry and i just <laughs> keep saying that and it's like dude shut the fuck up i heard one comic once he had a great way of being stoned during a show he would go anyone else get too high before my set <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. That's that's a good way that's to a, lean yeah, into that's it. A good, uh, if if you're gonna do it, that's probably the best way to lean into it. No, yeah. Get them on board with you. I definitely need to. I yeah. definitely don't need to do that because I also get like mad anxious before. Oh, yeah? So like I used to like get a couple drinks in and then I'll go because I feel I feel warm. Like, Same. Like, yeah. Yeah. I I get like one or two drinks. Mm -hmm. Although I did dry January. Okay. And I did I did a lot of spots during January because I was like I had a ton of time. I was trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard to do stand up without alcohol for a little while. Yeah. Because I used it. I didn't realize I didn't, I've used it as a crutch every, every single show to like take the edge off a little bit. Uh -huh. And then I didn't have that. So I would just freak out before I go on stage. And I'm pretty cool as a cucumber on stage, but beforehand, mm -hmm. no, I was like pacing. Like people can't talk to me. I cannot respond to you right before I go on stage. Dude, you know it's when I, I, I hate, because right now it's like, it, it's cold. I can wear like the, the hooded fits. When I do stand up in like the summer and I got like the short sleeves on and just like regular, like I sweat like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But when I'm in my hoodie, like I'm chill. Like or when I have like a coat or anything like that, like I, I feel good about that. Do you like do you have to wear something like to feel comfortable when you're on there? Yeah, I, I can't expose too much skin. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I just it feels vulnerable to be up there in a t shirt to me. I also used to be a lot fatter, so low key, like that was also a big thing too. Throwing on like a jacket or something. Yeah, I'd always throw like it'd be August, ninety eight degrees, dude. And I'd have a fucking <laughs> hoodie on, like a thick hoodie. Yeah, and I'd just be like, "Hey, what's up, guys? Like, don't mind me. It's what's the light up? that's shining on my forehead." I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> have you done Sorry, good guys. nights yet? Uh, the, I done the mic. I did the mic last night, or not last night, Tuesday night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I wanted to go to that, but like I said, I don't have shit prepared or anything like that. I'm working on a fucking hot dog joke right now. There you go. Yeah. I mean, the good thing with good nights is you only need three minutes to be yeah. prepared, so you can put together three minutes. Yeah. The last time I went to good night, though, I killed it. Yeah. It was yeah. Pretty, it was pretty I want to see you there next week. Next week? Yeah. Oh, right, no, 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 no. Okay. They don't have it next week. Well, because I was going to say, next week is Valentine's. It's Valentine's Day. I think they don't have it, but the week after that, I want you there. Okay. Even if you don't have three minutes, I want you there. Okay. All right, bet. I'll be there. All right. It's on video. Yeah. It's on, I, yeah hold, me is, hold me accountable, Alex guys. Alex is going to be at good nights. If, if it's on a day off, uh, we're going to have to push the recording to the next day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, you know what? If I got... <laughs> if I got... Uh, I'm going to write within these next... You know what? I'm motivated now. I've, I've, I got the fire in my heart now. Yeah. Hit me up. We can bounce ideas. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I would... We can go write together. I would love that. Okay. Bet. Go, go out. As long go. as I don't have to talk to Jack Christie on the phone, I'm happily. <laughs> no, I got you. <laughs> yeah, I, I really need to get better about like reaching out and like asking for help on jokes too, because that's one thing. I've always been told that, like, people have always told me, like, reach out, like, that's the best way to do it. For sure, yeah. <laughs> but I just don't want to bother you guys. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, when I first came here, I had that like outsider syndrome where I was uh -huh. like, is anyone going to be my friend here? I don't know. Like, can I talk to anyone? Uh -huh. And I just started talking to people eventually once I got over that. And everyone here is so nice. Mm -hmm. And is like willing to hit the ball back with you and meet up and stuff. And no, I agree. It's yeah. cool. There's a bunch of people here that that I thought were like the top dogs, and then getting to know them, it's like, oh, they're they're chill. Everyone's normal. Yeah, everyone's chill. Like, there's no like uh, this hierarchy that everyone's talking about. Like, it's it's not there. Yeah, you just talk to them. And everyone has weaknesses. Like all all the top dogs have like, I've seen people bomb that I'm like, oh, you're one of the best people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's reassuring. Yeah. Yes. Nah, dude. Um, all right, bet. I'm definitely going to go to good nights then. Hell yeah. For sure. Hell yeah. And we'll need to work out this hot dog joke. Do you know about bird dogs? Do you know what the fuck those are? Is that a type of hot dog? Yeah. It's like, so Buffalo Wild Wings made a, a, a hot dog where instead of the hot dog, it's a chicken tender and it's in oh, a that hot dog fire. bun. It's, it's, it's all right. I'm not going to lie. So they have four different kinds and I got the Buffalo wing one and that one's pretty good. 
But like, I have a joke where essentially, and I don't care if this gets used because it's a shitty joke. It's I go with homies and like you know like we're all from New York we're from the city so like we are all obviously like roasting each other all the time, and so I decide to order this bird dog and they're like they don't even know what it is they're just ordering their own food yeah. and by the time it gets to they're like this guy got a cock dog and it's like a chicken like bird dog whatever and I'm just like fuck I can't even eat a regular hot dog let alone this fucking chicken tender dog without it being known as a cock dog I'm like eating it there it's like ah 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 and I'm just like oh, no I'm fucking I can't I, eat this yeah I can't do. So my middle name is Richard, and people have called me Gregory Dick Capra for a long time. <laughs> and I it just like, at what age does cock jokes like that just get old? I think that's like a New York thing. People uh-huh. just throw th- throw the cock jokes. Cock out sucker, there. like that was yeah, a or comment. like uh, Uranus. I've, I'm going to call it Uranus for the Uranus. rest of my life. I'm tired of people saying Uranus. It's <laughs> funny as fuck. Jack Chrissy says that all the time. Shouts out to Jack Chrissy. This is the Jack Chrissy sponsored <laughs> episode. I'm just gonna any podcast I go on. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna find a way to roast Jack as a uh-huh. part of it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Oh man, I, dude, yeah, I definitely. You got you got me wanting to call Jack Chrissy now. Should we call him right now? Nah, he's probably in. Nah, I nah. Don't do that. What's your take on the uh, Chinese balloon getting shot down? Oh, you see okay. that? So I don't know much about it. I just know that there was a spy balloon, and then like yeah. there's hella memes going on. It's like. The they're like I saw a meme on TikTok where it was like the Mexican spy balloon. It's just a pinata in the shape of a ball. <laughs> oh yeah, they're like reapers. Like, yeah, it. it's just like oh okay. Yeah. Like, so what what's all that about? Like, give me the hoopla on. Dude, that. I know it's like a balloon floating outside of uh, South Carolina, mm-hmm. and it got shot down by the U.S. government, and it had uh, some some spyware in it. Oh shit! And it was it's I guess it said made in China on the side. I don't know. I made that up. That's not true. <laughs> it's just from China. I guess I don't know. That's crazy. So they just. Uh, s- so they just assumed it was from China, or like no, no, no. They from... knew they somehow knew it was from China. Okay. Uh, I think no. The Chinese said it was theirs. They claimed it. Oh, they, they claimed that it wasn't spy. It wasn't a spy balloon. Uh huh. But it had some sort of spy stuff in it. I don't know. The government's. I mean, listen. Obama. I like how Obama got Bin Laden. Bin Laden and uh, Biden got the spy balloon. <laughs> That's like his claim. Is he shot, he shot down the, the spy, spy balloon? balloon. He took yeah. him out. No, dude. I honestly, at this point, I'm very like neutral about like government things like oh like oh how do you feel about ukraine it's like oh well they got it you know that's that's their problem they, what? yeah <laughs> like i'm like that you know like i'm over here i play i'm literally playing Hot like take. video games and they're just like oh you know like this is affecting the world i'm like yeah that's cool i'm gonna let the government deal with that like that's yeah. not me if they need my tax money from it sure take it from my check that's fine yeah let me know if government gets in the shoe business but other than that <laughs> America could use more people like you, Alex. Oh, I'm just saying, dude, because that's like, what like, the fuck are you gonna do about it? America nothing. needs more people who are complacent. That's what we're no, there's no, nobody that's talking about the Ukraine is doing shit for the Ukraine. <laughs> that's true. Like, yeah, I'm like, if you're gonna go, if you're already gonna take money out of my check, might as well just if you're gonna use it for that, go ahead, do that. Dude. But like, I don't want it. I don't. I don't need to be there. If you're not enlisting me and I don't get hella benefits from it, I don't care. Yeah, if I'm not getting a 2024 this is a side of fries exclusive, <laughs> if I'm not getting my 2024 Dodge Charger for helping y'all fight this war, then I want nothing to do with it, bro. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. If I'm not gonna get this fucking PS5 from fighting your war, then fuck it. You got it. You want like a Best Buy giveaway? I as do. Your, <laughs> as I want my credit reimbursed. If you're gonna like help, if I'm gonna have to help you out, you're gonna have to help me. Out. <laughs> Deny are, for an eye. Yeah, those are pretty low terms. I bet the government would do that if you but, went to yeah, war. Yeah, they probably will. I mean, they're probably doing it right now. <laughs> if you took up arms, I think they would give you. I think there's like a PS5. side odd bonus for like the military right now. It's like two thousand dollars or something like that. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't know. That's 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 like five hundred more than what fucking McDonald's is doing right now for their employment. Or I'm surprised like that. they even have a sign-on bonus. Right? McDonald's. No, I, dude, I've seen... So during COVID, that was, like, the biggest thing is, like, oh, if you get hired here, you get a sign-on bonus. And, like, I did that for, like, H-Mart. Okay. The, there's, like, a Korean supermarket in Cary that, mm. like, you know, it's it's worldwide. But um, I did that for H-Mart. And then, like, Cookout was doing it. I remember seeing Taco Bell was doing it. And I was like, bro, you know what? Y'all, y'all need to start working. That's yeah, yeah. money. That's fire money. Yeah. <laughs> While you know y'all what? out here fucking getting PPP loans and then putting yourselves in debt. <laughs> Just go work at a fast food place. Exactly. It pays well. Nothing wrong All with All right, that. let's on three, let's both say our favorite fast food restaurants. Okay. Do you have yours? Yeah, I do. All right. Three, 
two, one. Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Let's go. Let's go, baby. We're going to be friends. Fuck yeah. We're going to be friends. All right. What's your favorite menu uh, item? Crunchwrap Supreme, baby. Let's fucking go. I only get, I mean, I like the tacos as well, but uh, Damn, I used to get quesadillas sometimes, but Taco Bell, uh, Crunchwrap's best. Dude, it, because they took off the Mexican pizza for a while, so it was Crunchwrap's, and I would take the, the, the red sauce that they had and yeah. just put it on top. Yeah. And then eat it like that. Now that the Mexican. Why'd they take it off? I don't know. Something to, so like every fast food restaurant was like taking items off. Like McDonald's took off the snack wrap. Uh, Burger King stopped being ass for some reason. Like it was weird. Like everybody was changing, and so just like, to like kind of try yeah. to be innovative. Yeah. So like fucking Taco Bell took off the Mexican pizza and they took off grillers. You remember the dollar mm, grillers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they took them off. I guess just to lower the menu because obviously supply was a lot. Fucking. God, it's hot in here, bro. It's yeah. hot. It's hoodie. I don't know how you're wearing that hoodie, bro. I can I can vamp for a minute while you uh we're at an hour now. Are we? I feel like we can go longer. We got a good conversation right now. Um <clears throat> I feel like people don't give Taco Bell enough credit for being innovators. Well, you know, and another thing too, because the reason I like Taco Bell is low key, they're very healthy for what they are. Really? Yeah, like like you'd be surprised. Like, I wouldn't say very healthy for what they are. That's why I for what, the, they, what are. they are. Yeah, for what they are. <laughs> for what they are, and what they are is <laughs> a uh, fast food chain. Fast food that you eat in your car, ashamed <laughs> at one a.m. You ever try to take an edible and not go to Taco Bell? By the way, Dude. it's impossible. You can't do it. Well, not if I pass by a cookout first. You prefer cookout over Taco Bell? No, it's just sometimes. When you're high? No, it's because I was driving a death bomb like for a little bit, and so like. What's, a, what's a death bomb? That sounds like a bad fart. A death bomb is literally a car that's about to blow up. Oh, okay. That's what okay. I call it. I used to drive, before I got my new car, like, I've been driving this, like, 2008 Honda Accord, and I just took fucking the worst care of it. Like, I barely did any oil changes on it. If anything, I'd do the oil changes myself, but really, I was just dumping oil in it and not changing the filter. <laughs> But, like, I was very bad with it. I just didn't care because it was already, like, on its last limb. It had, like, 390,000 yeah. miles on it. Like, it was bad. And so anytime I'd get high and I'd go and get food, cookout was always because I used to live in Raleigh and Capitol Boulevard is, like, the main road in Raleigh. And there was always the cookout before the Taco Bell. And so I'd go to the cookout first because it was closer. You hit one, two? Huh? You hit both of them? One, no, two? I, I would hit, I'd hit cookout first because, like— also, I, I hung around a bunch of people that just really liked cookout over Taco Bell. Cookout's good. I, I was the one friend that always choose Taco Bell, and everybody would tell me to go fuck myself. Who says that? I'll fight them. Oh, bro, you better meet my friend group. No, Throw but, me in the group chat. S- s- yeah. This, but, so they've changed their mind ever since they had the breakfast. The Taco Bell breakfast is yeah. what changed their mind? Yeah, have you had the Taco Bell breakfast? Yeah, but like, I don't see that changing people's minds about Taco Bell. Now, here's the thing, because you don't just get them the basic shit. You order it through the app, and you kind of let them know what's good to okay. put on there. You, you dazzle them with the experience. Oh, yeah. That you know. I, I let them know. I'm like, hey, bro, you ain't got to talk to nobody. Here's the phone. Here's that little pay yeah. area where you don't got to talk to anybody. Throw some fire sauce on it. Literally, bro. Oh, my crunch wrap, my breakfast crunch wrap is like a steak crunch oh, wrap. Oh, I, I fuck with the, the breakfast crunch yeah, wrap. Yeah, the breakfast crunch wrap is always steak, double cheese, double uh, chipotle sauce, and then an extra hash brown. Yo, that's I, I almost came right now. Bruh. That sounds so good. Did anyone take, else get hard? You take the breakfast salsa. That's just me. And once you take that first bite without the salsa, I might game get that over. on the way home. Bruh. That's tremendous. I used to uh cause I, I like I said, I just fuck around on that app. I I would put no meat in the crunch wrap. I would open it up and I would take those cinnabuns, flatten them out, put them in, and then you put them refold. in the crunch wrap? Yeah, the dessert them. crunch wrap. Yeah, it's so <laughs> You should submit that idea to Taco Bell. They might put oh, it on the man, menu. Dude, my biggest dream is to go to that. Uh, you ever see Coded? And you know how like he would take one of his employees to like the test kitchen at Taco Bell? Oh, I think I did. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to go there. He had an employee so... that was obsessed with Taco Bell. He yeah, took I want to yeah. go there so fucking bad. That'd be amazing. That's my biggest dream. Listen, if there's a spot, because I do mention like the fake, like, hey, sponsored by this. If there's a sponsor I really want, it's, it's Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. It's Hell. Taco Bell so fucking yes. bad. Live mas. I'm already Mexican, like. It's there. There you go. It's, it's match, there. It's Cider fries, Cider Nacho fries, bro. I'm down with it, bro. The branding's there. Cider fries sponsored by Taco Bell. Is, <laughs> I mean, that has to happen. That has to happen. Exactly. No, nah, but... um. You need to write a bit about Taco Bell. I do. 
Oh, you have one? I have a little. I like it's hurt. actually posted on my uh, Instagram. Actually, it's the okay. Mexican pizza thing. Oh, you do? Have, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You you've heard it, right? I don't know if I've heard the Mexican pizza joke. But. So it's uh, it's like Taco Bell recently. Are you about to do the joke? Right yeah, now? I'm about to do the Damn, joke. Damn, I right commend now. you. I... Bam, ready? <laughs> no, because it's super short. It's yeah, literally yeah. just like Taco Bell uh, ran out of stock of the of the Mexican pizza, and I'm here to tell you, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my bad. And so that that was an always a good opener. And like, yeah, just like a little just, clip. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, no, Taco Bell is my one is my one true heart. Yeah, first love. True love. One it's the love. only girl that has yet to fuck me over. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I never Taco Bell has never made me upset. Um, even it's giving me diarrhea, but even if they even when the diarrhea, I was still okay. Oh, <laughs> I felt good. You know, even when they fuck yeah, up your Taco order. Bell is, is a fe- has a feminine quality. So is it like it's a girl? Yeah, it's a, it's a mujer. Okay, I've never thought about it that way. Have it's you? A mujer. Taco Bell's a lady. I say that I've thought about Taco, Taco Bell. Bell is like is like. Uh, the girl that you you find on a dating app who like wouldn't conventionally be the person you'd hang out with, but then <laughs> she just hits you with something different in the bed, and you're like, oh okay, and then you get obsessed, and she throws shit at you you haven't seen before, and you're like, you're kind of grimy, but I fuck with it. That's Taco Bell. She's the only girl that you say you're gonna not talk to, but then she hits you up, and you're like, okay, let's let's have this chat. You're like, I'm free. I'm free. You're with your parents, but you're like, I I gotta have to leave. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> Something very important. You're on. You're at your finals, and you're midway through the test. You get the text message like, "Hey, you want to hang?" Let's be like, "No, let me just rush through this shit." Uh, I, have a, I have a doctor's appointment. I got to go. It's 11 p.m. No. Uh, no. Nah. Taco Bell is dope. You you know who else likes Taco Bell? Devin Roberts. Let's go. I love Devin. She's great. She's so nice. We got to do a video where uh, we all go and try out like Taco Bell, just like a muck. Well, not a mukbang. We should do eat. like a uh, a little just comedy sketch thing at Taco Bell. Fuck yeah, I'm down with that. That's definitely I'm gonna write that. I don't know, I don't know the angle yet, but we'll find one. I'm gonna write that we'll down find in one. my notebook. Yeah. But, um listen, Greg. Dude, this has been great. This is awesome. That an hour flew by. Like that was fucking fire. Dude, listen, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, man. You got any shows or anything you wanna Yes. <clears throat> uh I have them so queued up and ready to go. Is that it? That's that a, how prepared I am. Is that an iPhone X? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> no, so like I said, I work in phones, so like just... This is like old. This is old technology. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the thing is, Apple makes a new phone every like three months and they're like, oh, it's the same one as before, but now it's in green and I'm oh. supposed to buy it. No, it's just I haven't seen a phone with that camera in a while. It's just been a, a minute, you know. Sorry. You know, Alex, we were friends this entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> That's and then bad. I thought we were going to seal our friendship and then... No, it's all right. Here, I'm going to hit you with an offer, bro. You trying to upgrade? I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. you, Yeah. Okay, it. we got a number of things to talk about. Anyways, uh, I'll be uh, at the Berkeley Cafe uh, in Raleigh on the 17th, hosted yeah. by Jack Chrissy, unfortunately. So maybe don't come to that one. But um, I'll be in Youngsville, 18th and 19th at Burnt Barrel, and then Skylark Social Club in Charlotte on the 23rd. You hear that? This man's busy. If you busy. ain't situated, get situated. Again, welcome to another. Uh, I'm doing the intro again. Fuck! I was so hyped up, like I was just doing. The We're running intro it back. Again. Welcome to another episode of Side of Fries. I've killed Alex. I'm now the host. <laughs> no, but it's been a pleasure, brother. Appreciate Thanks, you, dude. Appreciate you. We can just do this. You know, we can hang out just regular without the podcast. No, too. fuck yeah, dude. I'm we'll do. It. We'll go grab that. Taco Bell or something. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Y'all have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe to Manly Girly Studios and check out all the other videos on the channel. You know, I'm not the only one here, you know, but catch y'all later. Peace. Woo!